Ah, Hades. A brilliant game which I got to play thanks to the courtesy of my friend sharing his Steam library with me shortly after the game's release, and a game to which I have returned recently due to an amazing gift from another friend who gave me my own copy of Hades. And, well, I have pumped out almost twice the amount of hours I had before I stopped playing, and at the same time I managed to get all of the achievements, which made me think just how hard it may be for an average player to Platinum Hades. Welcome to the Gaming Nest. I am Sparrow, and I want to invite you on a journey where I break down the achievement list and determine just how rough getting a Platinum is. In a platonic sense sometimes, because not all games have Platinum trophies of course. That being said, I invite you to a breakdown of an indie game by wonderful minds at Supergiant Games, Hades. So, let's start simply. Let's look at the most common achievement first. For the sake of clarity, I will be using the Steam version of the game. Alright, first off we have Clearing Tartarus, which is as simple as it sounds, but it gives us knowledge that almost 16% of people owning the game have either never launched it or didn't manage to clear Tartarus. But Clearing Tartarus is one of the self-explanatory achievements. There is one achievement for clearing each stage of the game, Tartarus, Asphodel, Elysium and finally beating the game, or more specifically getting your first successful run, the final of which has been achieved by pretty much half of the player base, which is an impressive score. Let's see what achievements lie between clearing Tartarus and getting the victorious run. Seeing as more people have unlocked all of the weapons in the game than have cleared Elysium, I don't have to say it's not difficult, do I? You know, six weapons, six different playstyles. Well, uh, technically, 24 different playstyles, but uh, I'll get to that one later. It's more than sure that you will meet different Olympian gods in your runs, and sometimes they may offer you their aid, alongside other boons. Basically, if the fight goes long enough, which will most often happen in boss fights, you can charge up this bar at the bottom to the max and invoke a greater call, which is basically a much stronger version of a regular one. Duh. Simply using that will net you the achievement. Different gods focus on different playstyles, thus the aids are often vastly different from one another, but each is strong in their own right. Artemis focuses on critical hits, Dionysus focuses on making your enemies as drunk as you can and giving them hangover, Zeus focuses on lightning which makes clearing rooms easier, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's stop here for a second because this is the first trophy related to prophecies. With 20 gemstones you can buy a fated list of minor prophecies, which are a set of tasks to do in the game world that will reward you with various items once you complete them. Ktonic Colleagues requires you to meet all of the Ktonic Gods, which are Nyx, Chaos, Hades, the Furies, no, no the Furies, the Furies, Thanatos, Charon or Sharon, depends on how you want to say it, and Hypnos. Once you've become acquainted with all of them and claimed the reward for fulfilling that prophecy, you will receive both the reward and the achievement. And now that we're past the finish the run once achievement, let's get deeper. With Thanatos, Skelly and Will of Sharon achievements, which are Death Dealer, Skelly Slayer and Will Stop respectively, we are still in the self-explanatory zone. I mean, practically all of the achievements in Hades are pretty self-explanatory, but some just need a little more work than others. Getting 15 more kills than Thanatos requires you to first meet him randomly in the run, and then hope you are either strong or efficient enough to clear enemies much faster than the god of death himself. And yes, stealing kills is a fair game, so, you know, spark for Thanatos getting a little angry about it. No one says you can't. No one checks that. Skelly is even easier if you ask me. You only need to stay a little in the room with him and slay him 15 times. It's as simple as it gets. Even if you're just starting the game and still can't get grip on the movesets of weapons, it's alright. Take your time and practice on the skelly. Buying 9 items from the well in one run can be a little tricky because that, more often than not, means that you will want to preserve your money and not spend it in Haran's shop. You are guaranteed to find a well after every stage and sometimes in the middle of it as well, so... As long as you supply yourself with 9 items in the span of one run, you are good. And the items are pretty helpful too, if I can be honest. 
Before we proceed any further, I want to explain one concept and some items so I don't have to do it on the fly later. Completing different stages with different weapons and different heat, I will explain that concept when we get into some of the rarer achievements, will net you specific items. Clearing Tartarus and the game will give you Titan's blood. Clearing Asphodel will grant you diamonds. Clearing Elysium, Ambrosia. Should you happen to clear three stages but for example die on the final boss, you will receive Darkness for defeating bosses in the previous regions and gemstones. All of the aforementioned resources are important and you can also find a Nectar. I would risk saying that spare for the Darkness, Nectar is the most necessary of all. As, as I mentioned, there are also gemstones, but they aren't as important as the other things unless you want to get every single thing possible in the game. Like literally every smallest thing. So to recall, Titan's Blood, Diamond, Ambrosia, Nectar, Gemstones and Darkness. With that out of the way, let's get back to breaking down the list. It is another story related thing, administrative chamber is needed for some later prophecies and it allows you to see your previous runs and most used boons. At a certain point in the game you can unlock it for 2 diamonds. Next on the list is putting Cerberus 10 times. I am actually shocked that it's all the way down here. Like, like look at him! Look at the boy! Like, how can you not pet him every single time you have an opportunity to do so? Like, just look at him! Day or Night Trader requires you to trade 20 times with this lovely fella. Mind you, rushing this achievement isn't really recommended if you're planning on clearing the game's story in full or platinuming it. You're gonna get it sooner or later anyway, so chill out. We've covered Olympians and their boons when talking about this achievement, so there isn't much to say here, just pick a hundred different boons. Getting to know which you do or do not have may be a little easier when using a respective prophecy or just looking up at the list of boons from any given god. Orpheus will begin singing again after talking to him time and time again and preferably giving him nectar when you have the possibility to make one of the later achievements a tad bit easier. Technically it could be called a story bound achievement but... I'm not sure how mandatory talking to Orpheus is, so that's arguable. That being said, talking to NPCs is a lot of fun here. The voice acting, writing, puns, character relations, it's all worth experiencing even outside of the achievements. I have been still hearing new voice lines regularly over 50 hours deep into the game, which is just wow. And here we finally arrive at Titans but related achievement. This one's simple as it only requires you to upgrade any aspect to its max level, which means 5th. If you're going with the aspect of Zagreus, the basic one for each weapon, then it means spending merely 4 Titan's blood to get this achievement. After beating the game once with each weapon, which is needed for another achievement, you should have 12 Titan's blood, provided you didn't spend it or trade it for anything else. Of course, the best course of action should be upgrading the aspect and the weapon you feel most comfortable using. For me, it was the bow and the aspect of Zagreus, which I have been using this weapon definitely the most in all of my time playing the game. Getting a close relation with a character requires you to give them a certain amount of nectar, upon which you won't be able to give them any more and when opening the codex, you will see a lock on your re relation progress. This is usually tied to either some event, a prerequisite, in case of Olympian gods mostly, or just talking to that certain person enough time. After the lock is taken off, you will be giving Ambrosia instead of Nectar. Usually two or three Ambrosia is enough to max out a relation, ergo make it close. Fun fact, Hades is the exception to that, as you get a close relation with Zagreus' father upon giving him five Nectars, which he gives you back afterwards, so that's definitely worth it. I find it fascinating that this has been one of my last achievements and the first character I got a close relation with was, in fact, Hades. After finishing my Platinum, I had backstart relations with everyone, which luckily isn't needed for a Platinum, but it's worth for the sake of an amazing writing, voice acting and to explore relations between characters, especially if you're a fan of Greek mythology. Catching a fish from every region should come to you sooner or later if you only keep on the lookout for fishing spots 
and a sound cue indicating there is one in the room you are currently in. Modified. Each region consists of obviously Tartarus, Asphodel, Elysium, Styx, Surface and Chaos. And it's worth noting that Fishing Spot can appear in the boss arena. So if you are in much later parts of the game and you're still missing the Surface Fish for example, then give a final boss arena a good look around to get it once you beat the old man's ass. However, before you can go and chill out and get some fishes, you'll have to purchase the fishing rod for one diamond. Once you start buying upgrades from the house contractor, which seems to be another achievement on our list, you will keep getting more and more useful things to unlock. Fated list, rod of fishing, administrative chamber, and much more. Although the achievement requires you to pay for 50 jobs from the contractor, focusing on the first category, which are war recorders, will benefit you heavily in the long run and will allow you to get some of the cheaper things from other categories much more easily, should you still lack 50 cumulative jobs, of course. Completing the main quest in the story basically means getting 10 successful runs. You can do it hand in hand with Master in Arms, one of the later achievements, as it requires you to fulfill a prophecy of the same name, which basically requires you to clear a run with each weapon. Taking that into account, it takes care of 6 out of 10 necessary runs to see the quote-unquote true ending of Hades, which is different from Epilogue, but we will get to that. Fulfilling any 15 prophecies, you're, if you're going for a platinum, you're gonna have it done sooner than you think. Some of these are really RNG based, like getting all the legendary and duet boons. They aren't required for platinum, but they yield some pretty spicy rewards. But some like Master of Arms, Ktonic Colleagues, or War Gods Bloodlust, you're gonna do anyway. There are 10 separate achievements that ask you to fulfill a specific prophecy, which makes it 10 out of 15 necessary for this achievement, so. Okay, this is one of both RNG and skill based trophies, as it requires you to beat Harun, the main merchant, in your runs. How do you fight him? Well, first of all, the RNG gods need to bless you and spawn a sack of money behind him. The sack contains 300 coins and you can borrow it. And upon doing so, Harun gets a little angry and wants to throw down with you. And he is not to be taken lightly. Being an optional boss, he's designed to be a challenge. One that can cost you a run at that. But should you be successful in defeating him, you will get a loyalty card, which means 20% discounts in all shops in the current run. And that's why risking a fight with Harun in Tartarus can be a good decision in the long run. 50 different Daedalus Hammer upgrades is one of the most self explanatory achievements. Initially, it may be hard to know which ones you did or did not take already, but should the relevant prophecy appear, this will come much easier. And it goes without saying that this kind of forces you to use different weapons as there aren't more like, what, 15 different upgrades per each weapon? It can also make you forsake your dream, your favorite build, for the sake of an achievement slash prophecy. However, be aware that some upgrades simply won't appear if you're using a certain aspect. Don't be a tempest like me, I did like 7 successful runs with the shield waiting for the last two upgrades to appear, only to later learn that these are incompatible with Aspect of Zeus, which I have been using all this time. If you are hunting for upgrades, I think going with Aspect of Zagreus may be the safest choice. Giving certain characters Ambrosia will net you a Ktonic Companion, which is basically a one-time summon. You can use it only once per run, but you can upgrade them with Ambrosia to use it more times. It's easy to forget about them to be honest, but companions can really help you in a pinch. Plus, you will have to unlock all of them to get one of the rarest achievements, which means progressing the relation until first Ambrosia with Magaira, Sisyphus, Dusa, Thanatos, Skelly and Achilles. Last of which may arguably be the hardest, but we'll get to that one later. I really am saying that a lot, ain't I? Clearing a run with hidden aspect requires two things. Of course, getting the hidden aspect of a weapon and beating the final boss with it. It's important to make a distinction here, because after unlocking the hidden aspect, you will get a prophecy to reach the surface with it. Reaching the surface does not equal beating the game, it only means reaching the final boss, remember that. 
But what are hidden aspects? Well, they are the final aspect of a weapon which changes the playstyle pretty much. To get them, firstly you need to spend some titans blood for that weapon. 5 to 10 if I'm not mistaken here. And when the RNG comes, because you can get hidden aspects for weapons from Achilles, Nyx, Chaos, Artemis, Zeus and Asterius. Spare for the Nyx and Achilles, you will need to meet respective characters while wielding weapons in any aspect. You, you know, shield for Chaos, bow for Artemis, railgun for Zeus and fists for Asterius. Then any next conversation with these characters can give you a required quote unquote formula to unlock the hidden aspect. And from there it's simple because you only need to approach the weapon and Zagreus will speak these words unlocking the hidden aspect. One way or another you will have to get them all to get another achievement. No, it's not about hidden aspects per se but you'll have to unlock all aspects of every weapon. Unlocking each standard keepsake shouldn't be too much of a hassle as it usually just requires giving each character a singular nectar to get a keepsake in return. Keepsakes are little bonuses that stick with you through the run and contrary to companions, you can change them between stages like between Tartarus and Asphodel. You can level up keepsakes by simply clearing the rooms while wearing them and if Platinum is your goal, you'll really want to level up as many keepsakes as you possibly can while hunting for the true ending or the elusive epilogue, because if that will be your last achievement, the game is great, but it will take you quite some time to level them all like that. Effectiveness, friends. Arab gates are something that won't appear in your runs until you buy them from the house contractor for a whopping 5 diamonds, which may sound like a lot, and it is, considering it's the only achievement related to them, but Platinum is Platinum. Anyway, to even access the first available area gate that has a chance of appearing in most stages, you will need a minimum of 5 hit to access the area gate in Tartarus, add another 5 hit for each stage, you know, 10 for Asphodel and 15 for Elysium. However, you need to only clear one area gate, no matter what it is. So how do you clear it? Well, it's pretty simple, you just need to defeat all the enemies in sight, without taking a single hit. Do you see already why doing it in Tartarus is easier? Enemies are weaker, simpler to dodge, and even if Asphodel enemy appears, because yes, as far as I've seen in Tartarus Arab Gate, enemies from Asphodel or even Elysium can appear, you may leave this achievement for later or deal with it as soon as you want. Sometimes Arab Gates will provide a helpful alternative from choices you have to proceed, so... If you feel confident and proficient enough, go wild, who am I to stop you? This one I am not even sure how I got, to be honest. I think you just need to encounter all the Olympian gods enough times and you'll get it eventually. Fulfill a prophecy of the same name, it's pretty RNG based because... Okay, first of all, the prophecy itself requires you to slay 10,000 enemies overall. Then how is it RNG you ask? Because I've gotten this prophecy when I already had over 17,000 foes slayed to my name. So it was basically, Ares gives me the prophecy, I finish the run, I immediately fulfill it. Oh right, if it wasn't apparent from the name, this prophecy comes from the Ares, God of War. And here we step into what I personally call the four great prophecies. Because these require you to reunite or help some of the characters in the underworld. In this case, you unite Orpheus and Eurydice. First of all, to even have a chance of doing so, you need to advance relation with both of these characters to the max until a lock prevents you from going any further. Then, upon talking with both of them sufficiently enough, we'll finally have Nyx. Quick addendum, I am almost sure that you also need to have a good relation with Nyx before any of the great prophecies can appear, but I may be wrong to tell us how we can help Orpheus. The last step will require us to spend 3 diamonds of the contractor to break the musician from his sentence. Upon meeting him and Eurydice together in the Asphodel and finishing the run, this prophecy should be done, together with the achievement. It's worth noting that upon doing this prophecy, you will be able to give Ambrosia to both musician and the muse to max out the relation. Extreme measures make boss encounters more difficult. Tartarus' boss often will put you against all three furies at once. Well, you only need to fight one, but the other two will make sure that you're having a much harder time. Hydra's arena has much more lava hazard, 
And finally, Elysian Champions, Fisius and Asterion. What changes? Oh, you know, nothing much, just the fact that the, both of them have bronze armor, and Fisius now rides in a chariot with two miniguns and bombards the area constantly. Yeah, casual stuff. Jokes aside, this fight is doable if you get used to it. In Fisius' chariot explodes when he's around 25% health, then he does the usual god calling and is exposed for some punishment. Provided that you can consistently dodge the wrath of the gods. I'm gonna be honest, Extreme Measures is one of my favorite difficulty modifiers, mainly because once you get used to the differences in bosses, it's 3 6 hit. I say 6, but it can be 10 if you can get used to the Enhanced Hades, which I could not. Okay, since I mentioned hit so many times already, I think it's due time for an explanation with the useless trinket. So to unlock the first of Skelly's prizes, you will need to complete a run with 8 hit. So, what is hit? In short, difficulty modifier. You can make enemies faster, stronger, harder to kill, make traps and lava and asphodel do much more damage, and a lot lot more. You can choose them at will and even though rushing for the first skelly prize, it's not worth it. Why? Because clearing a run with a weapon with one skull gives you all the boss rewards. Titan's blood, diamond, ambrosia. Clearing the next one with two hit gives you it again, and so on and so forth. And that's the main way for you to get more of the resources to buy things from the contractor, proceed with your relations or upgrade your weapon aspects. You will need to get 20% dodge chance with Hermes's keepsake. On paper it doesn't sound that difficult and if you're having a decent run it really isn't. With this keepsake you get a timer whenever you enter a combat room and you need to clear the room before the timer runs out. If you have a maxed out keepsake, you will get 1.2% per room cleared under the limit, so you should be done with this in like 17 rooms, which admittedly is a little and can take a few tries, so you need to get yourself a decent run and clear rooms almost as fast as Zeus produces children. To use calling against a god who gave it to you, you need to first, well, get a calling, of course. Once that's done, you will meet another Olympian. So there's a chance you will be able to get boons from both of them. But upon picking one, the other will get angry and will challenge you. Let's say, for example, that you met a good old Zeus, get his calling, and then you got buddy buddy with Aphrodite. Now, you get into a rope where you can choose both. If you have Zeus calling, choose Aphrodite, and vice versa. Try to stretch the fight long enough and survive to use the exemplary Zeus's greater calling against him. Okay, legendary boons often have some prerequisites to get them, like one or more often two of the previous boons from the same Olympian god, and offer often incredibly strong benefits, so parting ways with one can be painful, but sacrifices must be made. Whenever you finish a stage, you can purchase yourself from boons for money, so not only you need to get that legendary boon, you also need to have RNG blessing of the game to actually offer you to purge that boon from all of the others that you may have. Fulfilling this prophecy requires you to beat the armored enemies with all possible extra perks from benefits package difficulty modifier. It may take some time for that one last or two last extra perks to appear. Considering one appears only in Elysium, if I'm not mistaken, extra perks include, but are not limited to, enemies teleporting randomly, having way more health, dealing more damage, spawning fake clones until the original is defeated, and much more. Here is the list of all of them. Mirror of Night provides you with different talents, and as the name suggests, you need to level up all of them at least once. Remember that there are two interchangeable talents in one row, so you need to level both. Most of them are relatively cheap, but one level for both of the last talents costs a whopping thousand darkness, so... But in the long run it should come pretty easily sooner or later, especially if you put in a lot of hours in the game. Prophecy of the same name requires you to reunite Nyx and Chaos. Pretty much the same scenario happened with Orpheus and Eurydice. Progress relation with both of these characters, meet them multiple times, and finally Nyx will ask you to help her connect back with Chaos. But instead of diamonds this time, we will have to pay a little over 3000 darkness. 
3142 to be precise. Upon doing so we will have to encounter Chaos and find Nyx there. It's worth noting that it's not guaranteed, it didn't happen for me for the first two times I visited Chaos after that, so you may need a few tries to encounter both of them in his realm. Another one of the four great prophecies. This one actually doesn't require you to reunite anyone, but rather free Sisyphus from his, well, torment. Business as usual. However, I do think you need to have a good relation with both Sisyphus and Megaera for this prophecy to eventually appear. For the low low price of 4 diamonds you can help him and unlock the possibility of getting a close relation with the Fury and the Rock Rolling King. Unlocking all weapon aspects sounds easy enough on paper, but you also need to account for the hidden aspects, which you may get relatively quickly, or like me, get the last one around 55 hours into the game. This and 36 Titan Blood cumulatively to unlock all of them. 6 per weapon. Unlocks respectively cost 1, 2 and 3 blood. This achievement works hand in hand with Nyx's Mirror, or rather, if you haven't done Nyx's Mirror, you won't really be able to get this one. Why? Because Dark Reflection Prophecy requires you to clear a run while under different effects of Nyx's Mirror. Considering there are 24 talents and you can have 12 different active at any given time, you will need two full clear runs to get this trophy. Dap and unlocking Nyx's Mirror beforehand. And we finally arrive at the finality of the four great prophecies. Arguably the one that will take the longest for multiple reasons. First of all, you need to complete either two of the previous great prophecies. I did all of them, and you will probably do the same by the time it's finished. Second of all, you need to have a good relation with Achilles and Patroclus, the second of which can be annoyingly elusive. Either it was just my luck, but Patroclus really didn't like showing up for me in Elysium. Regardless, once you fulfill all of the necessary prerequisites, you will just need to encounter Patroclus and Elysium again, hoping that Achilles is with him. Once you meet them both, the prophecy should be fulfilled, and you should get the achievement right after claiming the reward and unlock the last stretch in both Patroclus and Achilles' relations. Reaching the epilogue of the story was my last achievement, mainly because of what you need to do to get an epilogue. Upon reaching the ending of the main story, you will be asked to get a close relation with Olympian gods, and you need to get it with a vast majority of them. Their respective keepsakes may make it easier to encounter them, but each of them has their own quite specific requirements to access a close relation. Some are simpler, like Hermes, Ares or Artemis, respectively, meeting Hermes while wearing his keepsake at max level, fulfilling Wargod's bloodlust, and just talking with Artemis enough times. Some are trickier, like Aphrodite, Dionysus or Poseidon, respectively forging close bonds with Dusa, Thanatos and Megaera. Aphrodite should have a specific dialogue after each bond, and then finally the lock will lift. Dionysus requires you to give Ambrosia to at least 6 different characters, with I think 10 Ambrosia given in total to any character. Poseidon requires you to catch multiple fish, and I think you need to catch a fish in the run prior to meeting him. Zeus and Athena are talk focused as well, you just need to meet Athena a few times after a successful run, and for Zeus you just have to hear Gus's opinions about him. Oh, and before we go asking for Demeter, you cannot max out her relation before completing the epilogue. But maxing out relations is just one part of the epilogue. This was the Queen's Plan prophecy. Part 2 is Family Reunion, which is a little easier, because you just have to encounter all of the Olympians once to hand them the invitations. Once this is done as well, and you claim the reward for the second prophecy, you will watch the epilogue and officially wrap up the entire story of Hades. But that's not the rarest achievement, we still have 5 to go. First of which is Harsh Conditions. As with many other achievements, you will need to fulfill a prophecy of the same name. What do you need to fulfill it? Well, you need to clear a run while under different effects of Pact of Punishment. The good thing is that you don't have to have all of the effects at the same time. You can take it one or two steps at a time while completing runs on higher heat to get rewards. Some of the modifiers can be annoying, but you can leave the worst ones until they're the only ones you need to clear a run with and then just roll, roll with it. Getting 30% damage bonus with Fanatos' keepsake is definitely going to be easier once you max it out. Okay, but how does it work? 
Basically, if you clear a room from enemies without taking any damage, you will get some percentage bonus. Initially, it's just 1%, so you would have to clear 30 rooms with it. Well, 29, considering it levels up after 25 to give you 1.5% bonus. But after maxing it out, it's 2% per cleared room, which cuts the necessary amount in half. It still requires some degree of skill to consistently avoid taking damage, but it's doable. Okay, this is the most skill requisite trophy out of all. After unlocking the first of Skelly's rewards, which requires only 8 hit, the second one asks you to clear a run while under the effects of 16 hit. It requires some practice for me and some really convenient boon weapon combinations to clear it. Though difficult, I'd say we should be happy because last of the Skelly's rewards require you to beat the game under the effects of 32 hit. There is no achievement for that, nor there is any kind of greater reward other than satisfaction from enduring the hellscape. So yeah, that's not the worst it could have been. And of course, you can take it slowly and lift this as the last achievement after you've beaten the game on, for example, 10 or 11 hit. Or you can be a masochistic dumbo like me and try to tackle it after returning to the game after a long break. Pick your poison, friends! Unlocking all of the Ktonic Companions is relatively simple. I mentioned who you need to give Ambrosia to get them, but that's the point. Without doing Divided by Death Prophecy achievement first, which already requires you to clear End of Torment, a Musician and Muse Prophecies achievements, which first of all require you to have a good relation rank with quite a few of the characters, you will not be able to get your last Ktonic Companion from Achilles. And finally, at the bottom of our list we have Friends Forever, which requires you to max out every single keepsake. Don't confuse it with companions, they can stay at their base level, you just need to have them unlocked. Which basically means playing a game with different keepsakes. A good way of leveling them up is in Sticks Temple, as most of the rooms there count, but this achievement is the reason why I mentioned earlier that you should start leveling as many keepsakes as you can while playing the game normally. That way you will either max them all out before epilogue or you will have one or two left, which isn't that bad. And that's all. So let's summarize what we have learned and how many resources we'll need to spend to platinum the masterpiece of a game that is Hades. We will need 40 Titans blood. I should mention, every number here is stated as a bare minimum. And thus, we will need 40 Titans blood, 36 for unlocking all aspects, and assuming you'd only upgrade the most basic one of the sword, Aspect of Zagreus, to the max, add 4 blood to it. So, summary of 40 Titans blood, which is surprisingly little if you think about it, so that's one resource that you will more often than not will be able to spend at your leisure. We will need 33 diamonds if we go for the all war recorders, or only 24 if we're going for the absolutely necessary unlocks. However, considering war recorders give you pretty helpful bonuses in the long run, I would opt for 43. With Nectar, it's either gonna be 116, 121, 129, and 139. I will explain soon why there's such a big disparity. Beside the fact that I may be dumb as at maths. We will also need 27 Ambrosia, or only 12 if we are skipping Aphrodite as one of the two skippable Olympians for the epilogue. And Ambrosia is a much less needed resource, surprisingly, because you need 6 for Olympians for epilogue, 6 for characters to receive companions, 3 bonus for Fanatus and Megaera, because you need to get close relations and romance options with them, and Dusa to be able to get a close relation with Aphrodite. Of course this can be skipped, so if you skip Hermes and Aphrodite, the amount of needed Ambrosia drops to just 12. And 9 bonus for Dusa. However, you can get these bottles of Ambrosia from Dusa later, but you can choose not to. And we're going with assumption you don't. Come on, you don't want to make Dusa sad, do you? Come on, don't, don't be that guy. And we will also need 6,347 darkness. Unlocking first rank of every talent in Nexus Mirror will cost you 3,205 darkness. And if we add 3,142 for reuniting Nyx with Chaos, it comes to grand total of 6,347 darkness. 
And that also shouldn't be a problem, but should you need more darkness, remember to repeat runs on the amount of heat you have already finished. That way, instead of blood, diamonds and so on, you will be getting darkness as was reward. We will also need 89 Ktonic keys, 65 for unlocking all talents on Nyx's mirror, and 44 for unlocking all of the weapons, so 89. Excess amount can be freely exchanged for nectar, which you will need a lot, as we already established. And finally, 1325 gems. It's under the assumption that you get all the work orders and the cheapest decorations to get 50 house contractor jobs. By skipping the most expensive of the work orders, I think the 50 job achievement can be easily attained with under a thousand gems. Okay, so let me explain where comes the big disparity in Nectar. If going for max type relations with every single character, then we need 149 Nectar. And considering you need to get a close relation with most of them, I don't think Hypnos and Sharon I needed for anything. And that we can technically exclude any two Olympian gods, we're gonna assume one of them is Hermes, because his affinity bar is longer by one than the others. Cerberus also isn't really needed for anything, but come on, we're gonna skip Cerberus, please. Please don't say that. I'm not sure about Persephone and Hades, considering the epilogue, but I think we can skip them as well. So let's break down Nectar a little more, because from our initial number, this can be lowered to two. Remember that even skipping means still giving one or two in the case of Hades Nectar to get them to get their keepsakes. 116 if you skip everyone and just need the necessary minimum of Nectar to platinum the game. 121 Nectar if you don't want to leave out the best free-headed boy in the underworld. 129 Nectar should Persephone and Hades be needed, so no matter what, you need a shit ton of Nectar. And that's it. I would risk saying that on average you may need to around 60 to 65 hours to Platinum Hades. Of course, getting a Platinum, if you ask me, should never be your priority when playing the game. If it's just, if you play the game and enjoy it a lot and feel you will be playing it a lot, well, you can give yourself a nice bonus set of challenges to just get all of the achievements. Let's break down the criteria on my subjective point of view. Difficulty comes mainly from the scale-related achievements and prophecies like harsh conditions or slash benefits. This and the fact that you need to complete runs on consistently higher heat and sometimes different weapons contributes to that, but thanks to the free hand and modifying difficulty, I don't consider Hades too hard of a game to platinum. Time is a tricky one to decide, because it's an indie roguelike and you can play it for hundreds of hours on end. But I think Hades with its 60 to 70 hours to platinum falls nicely into the middle of the platinum spectrum, because you of course have some games which you can platinum in like 15 or 12 hours. But then you have games that will require like 200 hours to platinum, so Hades, even on the last trip for platinum, is just as enjoyable as 30 hours ago. The gameplay loop is executed incredibly well, and getting a platinum here doesn't seem too tedious and monotonous of a task as it usually can be. And I think we also require some degree of skill, because trophies like 30% on fun at a skip sake, or 20% or Hermes one, require you to be a little skillful in the game. Not to say clearing the game with all of the weapons, and Elysium with extreme measures, Arab gates, etc. Luck plays a big role here, but if you're skillful, you will be able to make it out even during these seemingly hopeless runs, defeating Sharon, etc. And finally, luck. RNG comes in many forms and sizes. Packaging a legendary boon, great prophecies, hidden weapon aspects, necessary prophecies... But... I don't feel there is too much RNG in that. Besides, as, if, as we've already established, Hades is an amazing game, and if it asks you to play a little more for the RNG gods to smile upon you, hell, why shouldn't you? So overall I would say it's not too difficult in terms of getting a platinum. There are some challenging achievements and you need to put in quite some time and effort to get them all, but in hindsight getting a platinum in Hades was one of the most pleasant and enjoyable ones, because there was little to no mindless grinding. 
people at Super Giant Games managed to make another game that is just as enjoyable during your first hours as well as 60 hours in. And hopefully, with Hades 2 on the way, it will become even better, though I, I don't even see how it could be better. I hope this breakdown gave you some insight if you want to add another platinum to your collection, and I truly hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, whenever you are watching this. I just hope you have a glorious time in general. And if you don't, just please try to hold out. Difficult times can be like tides, coming in and out from the shores of happiness. So be strong and hold out long enough to turn the tide, and maybe find something to kill the time or keep your thoughts busy. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment if you will, subscribe if you're generous enough. Thank you all for watching, I love every single one of you. Until next time, Sparrow out.